All I can seem to make nowadays is just low effort content, I guess. Uh... <laughs> hey, so, uh, we're gonna do something, uh, I don't really know, a uh, uh, quickie video on an album. Usually, if I talk about an album, I do it in a full-length review where I go track by track and talk about it. But, uh, lately there's just been a lot of, uh, albums that I've listened to where I kind of don't really have enough to say about each track to justify making a full-fledged video out of it. With that being said, there are some albums that have that kind of thing, but I still have stuff to say. So, I've been kind of wanting to, uh, do one of these, and I've just been waiting for the next album to come out that piques my interest, and, um, the gentlemen have given me this opportunity with this new album, The Evolution of Tears. Um, is it really a new album? Kind of not really, it's more, um, it kind of feels like a Greatest Hits album, because <laughs> there's really only, like, three new songs on this album, and then, like, an, an interlude, and then the rest are just the previous songs that they've released. That's kind of a little disappointing. As a full-fledged body of work, if this is your first time going into The Gentleman and listening to their music, then obviously you get 2019 Guy, which is an absolute classic. Obsession, which is a really good song and one of the rare moments where they discuss a topic kind of more seriously. Real to Me is kind of a cheeky song. 2004 Breakup is a personal, like, favorite of mine. It's Quite possibly my favorite gentleman song of all time. Sky Nut's a well beloved song, even though personally for me it doesn't really do much. I'm not the biggest fan of it. So, you know, you do get songs on here that are good. I just kind of wish that we got a lot more original material than just three new songs and interlude and then all the past ones getting remastered, which, I mean, there's like a little bit of changes. Like, I noticed on 2019, guys, some of the vocals during like. Uh, the, the bridge and during the, one of the choruses where the female vocals come in are a little more apparent. You can hear the vocals a little more than in the original mix, which is nice. But, again, probably my biggest complaint with this album is just how much we've already heard and how much I kind of wish we had gotten a little more new material from it. With that being said, we did get new material, like I've been saying, uh, and it's, you know, pretty good for the most part, you know, the album starts off with uh, a new song, Your Boyfriend Doesn't Scare Me, basically making fun of nice guys um, who think that they're all, that they're like tough shit, and that like, oh, you know, I'll beat up your boy, I'll kick your fucking boyfriend's ass in order to be with you, and then he gets his fucking ass kicked and dies. <laughs> it's funny, it's probably the heaviest song that I've heard from them, it, it kind of sounds like it's and some, like, very drop tuning, maybe using seven strings. There's a little bit of Lamb of God influence I can hear just, like, a tiny bit during the chorus. Uh, the feature on it is... Alright, I've never heard a single bit of them, and they're just on the third verse, and it's pretty quick, And but, you know, they're not bad. The second new song that we get is Perfect Oblivion, which is teetering between my favorite song on this album. I mean, 2004 Breakup is on here, and like I said, that's my favorite gentleman song of all time. But Perfect Oblivion has quite possibly the perfect levels of nostalgia for me personally. It's overall a really fun song about uh, just nostalgia and looking back on the days of being with your girlfriend and getting high on literally everything until you're dead. <laughs> Again, it's a comedic song, but god damn is it such a nostalgic banger and it's so much fun to listen to. I love the guitar riff on it. Like I said, it ties with 2004 Breakup as my favorite song on the album. Then we get the interlude, which I wasn't entirely sure what this was going to be. Um, it's really not a song, it's just Charlie telling a story. It's a funny story. One of the best lines from it is, uh, this is a true story that I made up. It's a pretty funny story about just some fucking old woman that reproduces without having sex and that never dies because the people or the ones that she reproduces are just herself. It's kind of funny, but nothing entirely special. The final track is uh, Here's to Us, which is a kind of more love song sounding, a little softer than their usual stuff. Personally, I wasn't the biggest fan of it. It's not bad. I, you know, I probably, I might put it in my playlist just to give it a little more listens, but it didn't really stick out much to me like 
you know, Perfect Oblivion or even Your Boyfriend Doesn't Scare Me. And then, yeah, the rest of the songs, you know, 2019 Guy, Banger, Love It, Skynut, eh, never really was the biggest fan of it. Obsession, really good. I Am Truth, kind of not much of a fan of that one either. Um, never really, uh, never really hooked me. I don't, I, compared to Skynut, I honestly can't fucking tell you. 2004 Breakup, amazing. Love that shit. I I am in heavy nostalgia for the 2000s. I've said countless of times I basically fetishized 2005, even though in 2005 I was three years old. <laughs> I don't know, I just have nostalgia for that, so 2004 Breakup immediately was a song for me. And then Real To Me, I do remember liking it when it came out, but the more and more I listen to it, the less and less I like it. It's not bad, but eh. So overall, I would say as a complete album and songs in general, it's a solid body of work. It has every The Gentleman song to date in it, so if you were to introduce someone, you can basically just give them this out and be like, here, listen to this from back, and then that's it. But again, I personally just would have liked if we had gotten an entire album full of brand new material and not just all the songs thrown onto one with a couple more just bonus tracks, if anything. So where it lands as an actual album, I'm not entirely sure. As an actual album, I guess it can be a solid 8 if I ignore the fact that most of this had already been released, and it, like I said, it feels more like a Greatest Hits album than an actual album. But also, if I were to take just the original songs, the three new songs, and kind of use that as like a, just focus on those ones as like an EP, I mean, it's a pretty solid EP, two out of three songs, you know, pretty nice. But that's pretty much it, so uh, there's my thoughts, if you even gave a fuck. Uh, I, I, I assure you I'm working on more high quality content. Oh, trust me, I have a video in the works that's currently two and a half hours long, so uh, huh. be on the lookout for that in the next uh, five years. Alright, goodbye. Thank you.